the strange raven led the party to a massive statue of a human, an anomaly that should not exist within the green home forest. The raven perched and cawed, declaring, Here! Just then, a dark-haired elf emerged from behind the statue, his expression shifting from surprise to exasperation in an instant. No, no, no! he exclaimed as he rushed forward. I've been waiting for this for weeks. You'll scare them off. The group, bewildered by this sudden outburst, tried to question the mysterious elf. Who was he? What was going on? But he was too frantic, urging them to hide quickly or risk frightening away the spirits. They must sing the sun awake. With no time to argue, the group scrambled into the nearby brush and trees, guided by the strange elf's urgent whispers. Quickly, before the sun starts to rise, he urged, crouching down behind a bluewood bush. The forest fell eerily silent as the sky took on the soft hues of dawn. It was then that the group noticed movement near one of the large stones. Out from the shadows leapt two tiny spirits, one dark and spindly, with a mass of hair that floated as if untouched by gravity, and a large white mask adorned with strange symbols. The other was its mirror image, but white in color, with a different set of markings on its mask. The two spirits gleefully clambered to the top of a nearby stone, and soon more pairs of these spirits emerged from rocks, trees, and even the muddy earth itself. They ascended the stones, forming a circle around the ancient statue. As the spirits reached their perches, the forest held its breath. A soft wind stirred the leaves, and the spirits began to sing, a quiet, melancholic melody that somehow carried a note of hope. The song swelled, its harmony mingling with the rustling leaves as the first rays of the sun crept over the horizon. The spirit's song intensified, filling the air with a haunting, otherworldly sound as the sunlight brought the forest to life. As the golden light filtered through the canopy, the spirits began to fade, one by one, until only a single spirit remained, perched atop the tallest stone, basking in the sunlight like a flower reaching for nourishment. At that moment, the strange black-haired elf emerged from the bushes, clapping his hands excitedly. See, I told you they would show up, he said triumphantly as the raven cawed in response from its perch on a nearby rock. The group, still reeling from what they had just witnessed, demanded answers. Who was this elf and what had they just seen? The elf introduced himself as Kelton the Lost, the very elf they had been sent to find by Kaelin. As they explained their mission and how the raven had led them to him, Kelton seemed annoyed. That bird is always getting me into trouble, he muttered. His irritation deepened when they mentioned Kaelin, hinting at a history between him and the ancient druid. The group then told Kelthan about the strange human woman and the corrupted members of the Lone Wing Clan who were following her. Kelthan's face darkened at the mention of the woman. He revealed that she had approached him as well, just a fortnight before, seeking his help with an important task. However, Kelthan had sensed something deeply wrong about her, a strange and dark aura that surrounded her like a shroud. Uneasy, he refused her request. The next moment, the old woman was gone, as if she had never been there at all. Kelthan's unease was palpable as he recounted the encounter, clearly disturbed by the memory. As the group introduced themselves, Kelthan's demeanor shifted between friendliness and a strange, excitable energy. It became clear that he was a troubled elf, claiming that the spirits haunted him constantly speaking to him and forcing him to do their bidding. He explained that this had led to his status as a lone wolf, exiled from the clan by Kaelin, who feared his connection to the spirits. 
Despite this, Kelthan maintained a tenuous relationship with the tribe and even had ties to the Lone Wing clan, a connection that Kaelin had hoped to utilize when he sent Kelthan on a mission a month ago. However, it seemed Kelthan had become distracted. Curious about the spirits they had just witnessed, the group pressed Kelthan for more information. He explained that the beings were called Pinga and that they had just witnessed something incredibly rare, the spirits singing the sun awake and bringing the dawn. The Pinga, he explained, are elusive and shy, essential to the forest's life, yet rarely seen or interacted with. When asked about the raven, Kelthan revealed that while many spirits tormented him, Omen, the raven, was different. She had always been by his side, giving him power, and in return, he protected her. Omen, he said, was the closest thing he had to a friend. The group decided to rest at the grove, intrigued by the strange statue. Sita, using her magic, discovered that the statue was truly ancient, bearing signs of both she and human magic in its construction. The entire glade radiated with the same ancient energy, the statue deeply connected to the stones around it. It was clearly a depiction of a bearded human man lying on its side with one arm clutching a spear that had long since broken off. Kelthan, however, claimed to know nothing of the statue's origins, stating that he had only discovered it when Omen led him here. Minnow, drawn to the lone Pinga, basking in the sunlight, approached cautiously. To his surprise, the spirit did not flee, but instead watched him with a quizzical gaze. Its mask bore a design that was half a sad face and half a happy one. Minnow introduced himself and asked if it had a name. The spirit said nothing, but placed a tiny seed in Minnow's hand. Grateful, Minnow thanked the Pinga and placed the seed in his pouch, watching as the spirit danced around happily. Kelthan, observing from a distance, was amazed. I've never seen them interact with anyone. You're a special kid, he said, rustling Minnow's hair. As the group settled around a campfire that evening, they continued to question Kelthan about his past and his strange companion. It was then that they learned the truth. Kelthan was Kaelin's son, and their relationship was deeply strained. Kelthan was reluctant to share details, but he revealed that Kaelin had wanted him to follow in his footsteps as an apprentice. However, the spirits had other plans for him, plans that Kaelin could not accept, leading to his exile. When the group expressed surprise that none of them remembered this, Kelthan reminded them that he was 150 years old, still young for she, but far older than any of them. He also mentioned that he remembered Minnow's mother well, describing her as a kind woman who had led the clan with compassion, teaching the children with love. Minnow was taken aback, knowing that this strange elf had known his mother. With so much to ponder, the group decided to rest the day's strange events weighing heavily on their minds. Tomorrow, they would set out for the Lone Wing Clan's camp, their mission far from over.